That's right. cool. That's the next time. Call to order. This is the 20th regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will give us her most inspiring quote of the evening. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. The most powerful thing you can do to change the world is to change your own beliefs about the nature of life, people, and reality to something more positive and to begin acting accordingly. Thank you, Sue. Welcome. Roll call, please. Belt? Here. Boren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hammond? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichuk? Here. Raisler? Excused. Sampson? Excused. Van Akron? Excused. Vanderweel? Here. And Versi? Here. Twelve present. We have a quorum. Uh, if we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Gentlemen, please step forward. We have here PAC 3801. Den six Weeblos that are going to step forward to the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. You can all stand right up here, please. Stand right up here. Sure, you can stand up on the ledge if you like. We'll give you a little mic action here. Who wants to be the head speaker here? Okay, you guys ready? You guys ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for which is the injustice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, we are looking for approval of the minutes of the former Common Council meeting. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. Under discussion? If there is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Resignations. Attorney McLean. Your Honor, there's a letter dated January 6th to the mayor from uh, Ed Morgan. Citizen member of the uh, Mead Public Library Board of Directors advising uh, with regret he must resign and is resigning from the board uh, effective immediately for health reasons. Thank you, Steve. We have uh, Alderman Boren, please. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Before we vote, I'd like to uh, thank my next door neighbor, Ed Morgan, for his. Uh, tenure on the library board. Unfortunately, because of his health, he had to resign. But Ed being a CPA, uh, I understand from talking with uh, Sharon and Maeve Quinn that uh, Ed was a real good addition to the board, and I want to thank him for his service. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne, and I, uh, I agree with you. I've uh, known Ed since I was a kid. I grew up right down the block from him and his children, uh, and he was a great addition to the library board, and he will be missed there. Do we have a motion? President Decker? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to accept and file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have no mayor appo mayor's appointments tonight. Do we have public forum? Yes, we do. This evening we have Milt Storm. Milt, if you could come up. Mel, can I get your home address, please? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes, sir. I'll try. Thank you, Mayor Ryan, for this opportunity to address the members of this council in a factual and truthful manner. Since our beloved Packers lost say, yesterday, I would like to read a letter from a motivational speaker that I attended when he was at the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, or Baseball, uh, whatever, whatever it is. And it is Bob Long, who was a former Green Bay Packer. Bob Long, number 80, of the Green Bay Packers is congratulated by Coach Vince Lombardi and Doug Hart, 43, after his 80-yard touchdown 
run in the fourth quarter against the Chicago Bears at County Stadium Saturday. Long scored on a pass from Zeke Berkowski, the Packers defeated the Bears in the Shrine game 31 to 14. And I've got a thing that I picked up from Bob Long about Vince Lombardi, Principles of Success by Bob Long. Bob Long, after being a third-team All-American at Wichita University, Bob was drafted fourth by the Green Bay Packers in 1964. Timing is right. Bob played on the great Green Bay Packers team that won the National, the NFL championship in 1965, of many of the games that I attended, and won the first two Super Bowls in 1966 and 1967. That Packer team is the only team in NFL history to win three championships in a row. After a brief stunt in Atlanta playing for Norm Van Brocklin, Bob rejoined Lombardi in the 1969 with the Washington Redskins and retired in 1970 after finishing with the Los Angeles Rams. And he writes, Vince Lombardi, Principles of Success, Don't Use Drugs. Number one, the team. No one individual is more important than the team. Bart Starr could not win Super Bowls by himself. Salesmen, workmen, secretaries, and upper management should have equal importance. Number two, set goals. Staying on top is difficult. No team has ever won three championships in a row, but the Packers did. In fact, they won five championships in the 1960s. Mental toughness. Be disciplined. Do not make mental mistakes. Every player who played for Vince Lombardi had to be organized in early to meetings preparation. Be creative. Faking a dive to Jim Taylor on third and one and then passing down the field to a wide open receiver, that is being creative. Be aggressive. Ray Nitschke was aggressive. Market, market, market. Let people know what you do by email and direct advertising. That produces results. Positive attitude. Lombardi used to say, we never lost. Time just ran out. Had we gone into overtime, we would have won. Notable quotations. Bart Starr. You don't have to be an athlete to be a good sport. The quality of one's personal life is the full measure of that person's personal commitment to excellence and to victory. Hard work pays off. Mike Dicta of the Chicago Bears. When you speak about success, you speak about leadership because they are synonymous. And Bob Long. The treasure of a man is how he reacts in a crisis situation. The greatest accomplishment is not falling or failing, but in rising again after you fail. You know, Coach Lombardi had been Packers coach, I think he would have won, because I was doing with Neighbors Against Drugs with Officer Todd Preby at the time at Wilson School. And there was a little boy, we were giving them our NAD shirts, and he had in the back of his uh, yellow and gold shirt, God, Family, Packers. And that is what Coach Vince Lombardi said to his players. There are three things in this important in your life that you're going to have to do. The first one is God. The next one, he said, is family. And the third one, he says, Green Bay Packers. Now, I'd like to read, if I have time, a letter or a newspaper article from my favorite magazine, the Merrill Courier, where I went to high school with. And its county personnel policy touches union nerves. Governor Scott Walker and the state legislature collective bargaining restrictions came home to roost in Lincoln County Tuesday evening as the county board grappled with a comprehensive personal policy to replace union contracts that expire at the end of the year. Some supervisors see the proposed policy Excuse as an me, extension. Do would you like your extra minute? Another minute? Would you like that? Move the grant to extra uh -huh. minute. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Um, where was I? <laughs> Supervisors see the proposed policy and an extension of an anti-union actions as hundreds of county workers are about to lose union protection and become at-will employees. For some, the definition of at-will employee itself raises questions of fairness. The policy states, 
Employment with the county of Lincoln is voluntarily entered into and employees are free to resign at any time. Similarly, the county may terminate the employment relationship at will at any time for any reason or any reason at all, provided there are, is no violation of applicable federal or state or local laws. This is the inherently anti-union is simply not true, Cooperation Council Nancy Bergstrom told the supervisors, noting it applies to all employees and establishes a grievance procedure where none existed for non-union staff. This is a playbook for all the rules spelled out in the contract. Supervisor Jim Alber was among those that disagreed. This document supports union busting. He says, Governor Walker and his cronies put this kind of crap on our backs, and Excuse that's me, Mel. what it is all is, crap. Sorry, time is up. What? Okay, thank you. Thank you. To be continued next council meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mel. Next. That's it. That's all. Okay. Um, under mayor's announcements, I, I will be brief tonight. Uh, today is Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, I think we all need to uh, acknowledge um, the greatness of the man who is honored today. Um, not only did he preach of diversity, uh, but he spoke of equality for all people, and he stood for democracy for all people. So I think we, re need, we need to remember that. A um, couple of things. Uh, first, I would like uh, Scott Meliff to come out from behind the curtain back here. Uh, Scott has an announcement about uh, online streaming, I think, of our meetings. Scott, can you come out? I don't know if he's remembered to put a camera on where he's going to speak, but... Uh, the Grand Wizard. You want to go to the podium, Scott? He wanted to announce something that's way beyond my technical ability uh, to understand, so. We'll I, I just wanted to announce that uh, WSCS, Sheboygan's Community Station, is now available on demand on our website, wscssheboygan.com. If you click on programming and the uh, uh, PEG TV link, it'll bring up a player, and <coughs> this meeting uh, will be available starting tomorrow. Um, so if the, the regular TV um, coverage or uh, replay schedule doesn't uh, fit with your personal schedule. Uh, you can click and watch it on your computer at a time that's convenient to you or your smartphone or tablet or other internet capable device. So in not, not only uh, meetings but uh, uh, other locally produced uh, programs, um, the high school sports that we cover and, and other, uh, other locally produced programs. Great. Thanks, Scott. That's known as progress. Okay. Uh, we'd also like to speak of the election. I will defer any election discussion to our city clerk, Sue. Thanks, Mayor. I'm um, just going to quickly go through some things for tomorrow. Obviously, tomorrow is the election day. Uh, we have 16 polls opening at 7 a.m. They will close at 8 p.m. Um, what we've done to inform the public, several things. One of them, if you, or if you receive the Sheboygan Press, there's this great flyer in there that has all of the polling locations and it's got this great color map inside, which is a great reference. I don't know if anyone can see, but it's got the entire city map, shows all the polling locations. It's a good reference. Also, and I'm not going to say this 10 times like I did last time. What is the website? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> the um, real quick way this evening, if you were unable to call us today to find your new locations for voting, is http colon two forward slashes and then vpa.wi.gov. It's easy. You pull your name in or your address, and it'll tell you exactly what your new ward number is, and it'll tell you exactly where you go to vote tomorrow. Now, if all else fails, we will be in the office tomorrow, 6, 6.30 in the morning, and you can call us at 459-3361, and we'd be happy to let you know where you're going to be voting. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Uh, the only thing I have to add is uh, if the public can understand that uh, poll workers, we have a lot of new poll workers out there, so if you go to a poll, uh, please be patient. Uh, be patient with the, with the poll workers out there. Uh, if they tell you you're at the wrong place, um, you're at the wrong place. They will tell you the right poll to go to. So everybody, please be, uh, be patient with, uh, with the process tomorrow. That's all I have. Moving on to the consent agenda. 
21 through 2014. Note 20-4 lies over. Uh, it is on the consent agenda, but it lies over. So that will be reviewed the uh, next council meeting, 21 through 2014. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that all our roles be accepted and placed on file, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions and ordinances be passed. With the exception of 2014, I'd like to pull forward for a separate vote. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to pull 2014 forward for a se separate vote. So we will discuss 2014 first, which is an RC by salary and grievances, recommending authorizing the city of Sheboygan to extend the current hiring freeze until December 31st, 2013, that should read. Uh, under discussion on that, on 2013, or 2014, excuse me. Under discussion, we have uh, President Decker or Vice President Hammond. You guys are still backwards on my board here, so it's Vice me. President Hammond, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I, I'm not going to support this. I think uh, um, this is one of those things that at its time needed to happen, but now with the budgeting process that we have, um, if, if the position's budgeted and it should be filled, they shouldn't have to come back to this body every single time we want to hire somebody. If it's a new budget item, we already have a process for that. Um, so it's time to let our department heads do their job, hire their people that they've budgeted for, um, and move on. So thank you. Thank you. Vice President Hammond, any further discussion on this issue? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to disagree partly with my colleague, Alderman Hammond, and that is the uh, state has imposed a... Uh, a, a, a tax freeze on us for the years 2012 and 2013. So I think under the circumstances, uh, this, is, this is appropriate under, this, under what we've been given by the state government. And I still think uh, even though positions are budgeted, uh, when the time comes up for a position to be filled during the year, we should, get a pre, uh, we should get an update from our chief administrative officer to see if we're still meeting our budget targets for the year. And therefore, I think any hiring decision should come back to the council. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, two simple words, fiscal constraint, and that's what this does, is it brings it back to all aldermen to have a vote, not just back to three that can pass. Yep, if it's in the budget for this year, great. Can we look forward in this city longer than this year? Um, it's in the, this budget this year, okay. What about next year, the following year, the year after that? We need to start looking forward as a city. So these hires that come in, and we'll talk about it later as, as it comes up as well, needs to be looked at longer term than it's, it's in the budget for this year. Our department had budgeted for this year. That's great, that's this year. And if several years back, a lot of people will remember in that instance of four unfunded firefighters that we had to then fund the following year. Um, that's what this is trying to alleviate happening again. Not just having salary and grievance deal with it, having it come in front of everybody to get the same explanation. We only turned down one person last year on the hiring freeze, and that was from uh, former Director Bittner. Um, he re-looked at the position and said, you're right, we don't need to hire that position, and he didn't hire it. So it does work, it is in place for a reason, and it is for fiscal constraint. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I would have to agree with them. Um, Vice President Hammond, I, I, I think um, I hear it all the time. We are continually um, being accused of micromanaging. I, I think that it just throws another um, step in the process that's, that's not needed. It already goes to salaries and grievances. Let the committee do the work. And um, once again, we got to remember we pay our department heads a lot of money to make these decisions, and we got to trust that they're going to make these decisions in the best interest of the city. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Carlson took away exactly what I was just going to say. That's what this is. It's micromanaging. I don't think it's needed. Uh, if the money's in the budget, I don't see why the department heads can't make the decision. They put the trust in them to do so. Thank you, President Decker. Um, and both you and Alderman Carlson stole my line, which was micromanagement. Um, I believe that uh, department heads are hired to make these decisions. Uh, if these uh, positions general are, if they are, are in the budget, our positions that are in the table of organization, I think we, we need to leave it up to the professionals that are hired to do that job to make that decision. That's my opinion. 
Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Everybody understand what the vote is? An I vote will be to pass the resolution for the hiring freeze. Belt? No. Warren? Aye. Carlson? No. I'm sorry? No. Decker? No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Percy? Aye. Seven ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Uh, back to the uh, rest of the consent agenda, uh, with the exception of 20-4 lies over, so it is 20-1 20 through 20-3, and 20-5 through 2013, under discussion. If there is no further discussion on the consent agenda, roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to communications and petitions 2015 to be referred. Reports of officers to 2016 through 2022 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three. 2023 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire six firefighter paramedics in the fire department. Uh, Alderman Raisler's not here. Alderman Versi. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two things right off the bat. Um, both myself and Alderman Sampson actually shouldn't be on this as uh, approving this since it was not a, um, in our votes within committee. But uh, since I am the vice chairman, I guess I need to <laughs> press the uh, resolution and be put upon its passage, I believe, since second. it's been through here. And I'll second that. Yes, let the resolution be put upon its passage. Is this what the document I have here, Sue, that we're discussing? Um, this, what, this did come out of uh, committee. Uh, motion by Alderperson Kittleson, second by Alderman Decker to approve. Um, it, it, it did receive uh, three I votes and two no votes coming out of committee. The motion did pass out of committee at that point. Under discussion, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Back to the same statement. Th this is coming as um, kind of a blatant disregard for fiscal responsibility having to come in with this number of hires. Um, they've been doing a wonderful job recently, cross-staffing, um, doing 15 to 16 a shift and doing a great job at what they do. Um, having to come in and do hire six more, which equates to a little over $300,000 added to their budget, which right now is in the budget because of the retirees. I think it needs to be looked at again and it needs to be, we need to be more responsible on what we're doing. We need to look at the future and how this fire department is going to look how the fire budget's gonna continually increase, including their step raises and the CPI raises that they're gonna be getting. It's just an inflation, a budget, and maybe we can throw another fee on here to pay for it, but um, I am not in support of this in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. I think one thing we do need to remember is that uh, we did sign a contract uh, with our firefighters, uh, four-year contract, two and two, I believe, uh, as far as uh, uh, pay goes for the next four years for the majority of our firefighters. Uh, we have President Decker. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, ask Fire Chief Harmon to the podium just to give us a refresher. This did take place December 16th, and there's even a few things that I'm unclear on and don't exactly recall. So just as a refresher, if you could come Great. forward. Thank you, President Decker. Chief. <coughs> Um, this did go through committee. Um, I believe I was very forthcoming. It was very clear in the document. Um, we actually did have eight retirees. Um, so I think I am being fiscally responsible coming in only asking for six. Um, as far as, I don't know if the question was asked, but I'm sure it's going to come up. What, how do you fund this in 2013? Um, because they're only funded in this year's budget for nine months, obviously we'll be uh, about $90,000 short. Uh, however, we do average, 
uh, two and a half to three retirements a year. So there's a good possibility we'll be in that same situation in 13 to delay um, hires. Um, in addition, um, we brought in uh, roughly $100,000 more than what was projected in 2011 through the ambulance. Uh, that hasn't been reported yet, but those are the initial numbers. Um, I need people to be able to do that. Uh, in addition, you asked me for a long range plan, which I submitted. Um, that was discussed in numerous committees, that was discussed here, and it was felt that we don't want to close a fire station. If I can't hire these six people, we need to close the station. Thank you, Chief. Under further discussion, Vice President uh, Hammond. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. Um, first off, Chief, this was part of a larger reorganization plan where you went from two deputy chiefs to one deputy chief in that plan that you took the salaries and grievances? That's correct. There's, there was also some additional savings after the budget was adopted that, I, that we're going to realize this year. So again, not only did you go from eight to six, but then also got rid of a deputy chief as part of all of this overall reorganization plan? That's one of the two that we didn't replace, correct? Okay. I, I mean, I, I think, again, we have to have the bodies to do the basic services. It's great to be able to stand up here and say, we got to cut, we got to cut, we got to cut, um, until, again, it's your house that those people are supposed to be responding to. Um, you know, again, you can cut too far, and now you're really starting to do damage. And I think, again, uh, micromanaging this process when the six people are not only in his budget, but he reorganized the department to save two of those positions uh, from having to be rehired. I mean, we should be you know, thanking him for doing that. Um, thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vice President Hammond. Alder Person Kettleson, please. Um, thank you, Mayor. And I guess I'll just reiterate what, what uh, Alderman Hammond, sa uh, Hammond said, is that I was there at the at meeting, and I appreciate you uh, going over that again, Chief, that uh, yeah, you explained it to us very well, and we understood that uh, uh, there would be that you that the uh, you would be hiring six uh, six people there in the fire department. So it's it's clear to me now, and I do support this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in the I may have missed this at the salary and grievance committee if I was there, but uh, were there any number of positions guaranteed in the contract negotiations that we just completed? No. So. We're, we're not doing anything in bad faith as far as the contract goes if we wouldn't approve these positions, are we? No. Not as a, in regards to the negotiations, no. Okay, because I thought that we were inferring there that we had a contract and that this was part of the contract. No, I, I was, I was, was. Alderman Bourne, I was referring more to the, the, the pay rates in upcoming years with raises, et cetera, was, was built into the contract. And then one other question, Chief. I think I remember from the report that you submitted to the uh, mayor back in April that uh, by, the, by, by the national standard that you go by, that Sheboygan actually would still be considered by the, the standards that you go by as uh, a, a four stations would be adequate rather than five? It's not the number of stations that brings us to that standard. It's the number of people that are in those stations. And uh, how many people? How many people does that bring you up to if we approve these uh, six hires? It brings us up to where we were at last at last year's um, TO level. As Alderman Versi said, that we've done a good job of cross staffing, of responding with 15 people. I can't respond with 15 people come vacation time without hiring this six these six people. Now, isn't it, isn't it a fact that when you're doing some of these out-of-town transfers that you're, in effect, closing a station already? No. You're down, but you're down people in one, in one particular station that if that station would get a call, you couldn't effectively respond with that station. Is that correct? That's what cross-staffing is. That's when, we, that's when we divide up on the rigs. So you're not actually closing a station, but you're down people if you do an out-of-town transfer on a shift. Would you have, if you got a major call, would you have to call in people then? If you had three or four people down in Milwaukee on a run? There would be no different than if we had two fire calls going on at once or a gas leak going on at the same time that a fire call came in. Yeah, for short people, we need to call other people in. That's the way we're staffed. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you brought up the fact about closing a fire station again, and actually Alderman Bourne did hit it on the head. Um, several times in the recent past, which hasn't been broadcasted anywhere 
uh, when there have been long distance transfers, a fire station has been out of service uh, multiple times. And that's due to the cross staffing, which I understand the aspect of that, but that's not brought to the public knowledge that a fire station is being closed. So if you actually went down to the four stations, you wouldn't be taking a fire station out of service to be going on a long distance transfer. And that's where all the rim of is going with that on less stations, more same amount of guys spread out between those stations. Now you're not having to lower the fire protection for those certain areas when they're on a long distance transfer. I would tell you that 3,600 times a year, there's a station closed because every time that station goes out on a call, that station's closed because there's nobody there. So if you're gonna use that argument, every time we go on a call, we need to call in to, to open that station back up again. So that's not a very legitimate argument. Thank you, Chief. Um, if I can remind everybody, we did close the station at one point. We were going to have a, a rolling closings of stations every six months, I believe it was, we were going to close another station. That didn't go over very well. Uh, there was a, uh, uh, a groundswell of public opposition to doing that, including from this council, um, from those aldermen whose station happened to be closed at that time. Um, so I, I just want to remind everybody of that. Um, we have a budget um, for the fire department. These hires meet that budget. Um, again, I think this goes back to micromanagement, micromanagement, micromanagement. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Chief Herman, of the eight retirees, what was the breakdown of the eight? Uh, of what, what they were? were the, yes. Oh. A shift commander, <clears throat> a captain, a deputy chief, a, cap, um, a lieutenant, a driver, mechanic, one firefighter, I believe. Okay, so we lost <clears throat> one firefighter, paramedic, and we're gaining six? The people retire off the top, we hire on the bottom. That's why they're all, the hirees are, we've already promoted within, those were all approved and done already. So we need to fill on the bottom, which are the firefighter paramedics. Okay. <laughs> we, don't, yeah. we don't hire a, a deputy chief when a deputy okay. chief retires from the outside, we bring somebody in on the bottom. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Alderperson Kath, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, Chief Herman, you stole my thunder about the comment about any time we send a truck out, the station closes. So, um, and then once again, public opinion. Uh, Whitewater study, I'm pretty sure they, um, the respondents of that survey said that they were happy with our fire service and ambulance service. So trying to cut a station it would go against that Whitewater study. So, I mean, we paid $18,000 to get public opinion, so why are we gonna go against it? And then, um, don't you have a backup uh, ambulance? We do. So, so you could call in extra bodies and you have a rig for them, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Uh, Alderman Bourne, third time. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in response to what Alderman Carlson said, it was interesting on the Whitewater survey, uh, when we had the committee meeting uh, with what questions were gonna be allowed to be asked on the Whitewater uh, survey, I wanted a question in there about whether the citizens wanted to outsource the ambulance service, and I lost that in committee, but it was very interesting that without even being a question on the Whitewater survey, a number of respondents said, give the ambulance back to Orange Cross. So that was on there, Alderman Carlson, without even being a, a choice for an answer. And also, I don't wanna burn any bridges, but if we go back to two, late 2008, when we were in that process, when Mayor Perez was mayor, and Chief Lestusky was on his way out the door. Uh, I don't know if it was at uh, Mayor Perez's urging, but uh, Chief Lestusky recommended changing, or, uh, closing the downtown station starting in 2009. And as, as far as I'm concerned, the rolling blackouts were nothing more than a political ploy to upset the citizenry when it wasn't necessary. If the downtown station would have been closed when it was recommended to be closed, and it made a lot of sense from going out and visiting uh, with, with Chief Lestusky, with Alderman Heideman, uh, that should have been closed already in 2009, but for some reason, this council has never had the courage to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Versi for the third time. Last, last comment, just directed towards my counterpart behind me, uh, Alderman Carlson, and anybody else that brings up the Whitewater survey, um, I personally can't form my city over 200 people. There's 50,000 people in our city, and we had 200 respondents in the Whitewater survey. So in my 
eyes, I guess I have a hard time taking everything that those 200 people wanted for the majority of our city. It's just, it's not, the numbers just aren't there for that to be responsible on our part to frame our city over 200 people. So that's my only comment with that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. And Alderman Carlson for the third time. Last time. Thank you. There was a referendum, I, I believe, right, on this issue, although it was a close one, but that was still a great number of people that wanted this ambulance service. Um, even though it was only 200 people, you still have to listen to them. And uh, although there, there are things on that Whitewater study that I, I, I don't agree with, but if enough people talk to me and, and give me good reasons why they want to keep a, a service at a certain level or whatever, I, you do have to listen to that. So between the referendum and the Whitewater study, phone calls and emails, what I hear is nobody wants to cut the fire department. Or not nobody, but a good majority of people in the city do not want to cut the fire department. The chief has done a great job. I mean, we've all talked about it already tonight. Eight retirees, he only hired six. He restructured the department. They've been doing well. Once again, I think we're just trying to micromanage here. And I, I think it's unnecessary. I think the point needs to be made that we send our fire trucks out the majority of the time with only two firefighters on those pieces of fire apparatus. Prior to getting the ambulance, we sent those out with four people. Now we're going two and two, two on the fire truck, two on the ambulance. So if you shut the ambulance down, I will not send my fire trucks out with two people on them. It is not safe. Nobody else does it that way. So we need to put those people back on the fire truck. You cannot get rid of any firefighters. It, this council needs to decide what you want your fire department to do, be. We've had this discussion I don't know how many times. Alderman Versi, you sell insurance. I doubt that you tell all your clients you should buy the least amount that you possibly can. Alderman Bourne, you insure your Corvette. I doubt you have the least amount of coverage on that car when you're driving it. We're an insurance policy. Do you want us to be the least you can get by with? Or do you want us to be adequate? We've done a heck of a job with the number of people we have being way more than adequate, being a good fire department. You need to make that decision. Thank you, Chief. Vice President Hammond for hey. the third time? No, not third. Only second? Yes. All right, very good, sir. First off, I, I don't think we need to go back and rehash this ambulance debate. Every time the fire department comes up, we go back and rehash this ambulance debate. We've had it twice, it's been a referendum. It's time to move on from that. Secondly, back to the Whitewater study, um, if you, uh, any backroom knowledge of statistics at all, a sample size is considered statistically significant at 33. So a sample size of 200, um, most statisticians will tell you you can infer quite a bit from that information. Third, you know, with the chief, you have to promote. You need command and control. Police departments and fire departments are quasi-military organizations. You need to have leaders, and those leaders need to lead. And you have to backfill them when they get promoted with, with new firefighters. And finally, I call the question. Okay. Question is called. Do we have a second, second. on calling the question? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Question is called. Roll call, please. Sue, can you explain what the vote will mean? Um, this one is lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire six firefighter paramedics. And I My vote. vote would be to do it. Nay vote would be not. Very good. Okay. Roll call. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichuk. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. No. Belt. Aye. And Boren. Aye. Ten eyes, two nos. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay, moving on. 2024, report of committee six by law and licensing recommending that pawnbroker license application number 2874 be denied based on concerns regarding issues of public protection and safety. The applicant's past behavior and the criminal background of the applicant's business associate. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Teresa Gerke here? She is not here. Please continue. The committee um, 
talked about this at length, and the fire department or the police department had a negative recommendation for the applicant as well as her associates. Very good. Any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, roll call, please. Hannan? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Committee 7, 2025, by Law and Licensing, recommending that Taxi Cab Operator's License Application Number 9407 be denied, based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Is Benjamin's Astro here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. We voted four to one to deny his license. Um, he had many violations <clears> that he did not reveal from 2004 to 2009. Um, although he's had nothing since 2009, um, the committee voted to deny the license. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Haman? Aye. 11 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Report of Committee 8, 2027, by Law and Licensing. No. 2026. 2026, Report of Committee 7. I thought I missed one there. By Law and Licensing, recommending that Taxi Cab Operator's License Number Application 8316 be denied based on his record of violations related to the license activity and his record as an habitual law violator. Alderperson Vandal Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. Is Nassar Jaber here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. He um, had a license previously. However, since um, his license had expired, he's had new violations, which include a felony drug possession in 2011 and a negative uh, recommendation from the police department. Very good. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manischek? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Foran? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. 20 Report of Committee 8, 2027, by Law and Licensing. Recommending authorizing the presiding officer at city meetings the discretion to utilize a written confidentiality agreement for closed sessions and the resolution attached. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. And the resolution be put upon his passage. And the resolution Two. be put upon his passage. <laughs> okay. At we have a motion and a second under discussion. At the committee level, it was voted three to two um, to pass this resolution. I voted against it simply because I um, already took an oath and I don't think I need to continually um, sign paperwork saying that I'm gonna continue that oath. Thank you, Alderperson Vanderweel. Any further discussion, Alderman Boren? <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I brought this resolution uh, forward originally at the at the co-sponsorship of President Decker and Alderman Hammond, and also Alderman Koth from the Law and Licensing Committee. And unfortunately, uh, we've been having trouble lately with, with uh, closed sessions, with information leaking out to the media. It started out with you, Mayor, appearing uh, on WHBL after a December, after a December council meeting, uh, revealing one of the principals involved in a supposed land discussion, or as, a land sale that we discussed in closed session the next day that came out. And then as recently as last week, in one of your media things with the radio, uh, referring to the number of slot machines and blackjack tables at a proposed casino, that possibly even could have been uh, discussed in closed session. We also had uh, some difficulty with aldermen leaking information uh, 
uh, after uh, Committee of the Whole meetings and also had some difficulty with Alderman not returning documents uh, after Committee of the Whole meetings. So uh, after consulting with Attorney McLean on this and leadership of the council, I felt that it was necessary to bring this forward. Unfortunately, I know we all took an oath, but apparently uh, some people are not uh, following through on the oath they've been, that they've taken. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bohr and Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I understand this, but uh, my question is uh, for the city attorney here, um, what kind of teeth does this have? Like, uh, what does this really do? Because I, I don't, I mean, it's just telling me that I'm, I'm not gonna talk about it, but it doesn't say what's gonna happen. So, I mean, what's really the point of signing this document when, as Alderman, Van, uh, Alderman Vanderweel already said, I took an oath. So, I, I don't get why we need to do this. Uh, well, it's drafted in uh, in the format that it's not required. It, it'll be at the discretion of the uh, chairman of the committee. Uh, uh, there was a concern by a number of aldermen that uh, there be more formality given to the discussions before you go into closed session about how this is confidential and uh, needs what the, is said and the documents that are discussed in closed session need to stay in closed session. Uh, this doesn't do a, a lot more other than if you can identify, uh, I guess the same issue right now, if you can identify who the individual is uh, or multiple individuals that do disclose information from a closed session. I think the council has uh, prerogative to bring ethics charges against that individual or individuals uh, for breach of uh, uh, their ethical bio, uh, obligations to uh, maintain confidentiality. Um, but it's, it's a way to, I guess, press, press, impress upon uh, the members going into closed session, perhaps even more, the, uh, the need for confidentiality. And the specific acknowledgement by all the individuals that indeed they will maintain the confidentiality of the, uh, the materials to the extent uh, a committee member may have problems agreeing to that. Uh, I think it would be incumbent upon the chair then to uh, excuse that person from being in the closed session if, uh, if they won't agree to uh, maintain the confidentiality in a written format. So, uh, you know, it's not perfect. It, it's not gonna be a cure-all necessarily, but uh, it may be of some assistance. And again, that's why it was my suggestion to make it discretionary on the chairman's part. Uh, hopefully, you know, we shouldn't need anything like this. Uh, but uh, there is some feeling that that is needed. So. It's, this is available. Yes, once again, I, I, I'm not really disagreeing with the, uh, the importance of it. It's just I, we've, these persons have already proven that they're going to disregard the oath that they took and the, the importance of closed session meetings. So I, I just think it's a, just something else to do. And I think it's just kind of, in my opinion, a time waster. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Bell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is for the city attorney also. What, what would happen if we choose not to sign this? Uh, I think, as, as I mentioned, uh, Oliver Belt, I think the, the chair of the particular committee or the uh, council could uh, uh, recommend that that older person or committee member be excused from the meeting if, uh, if that individual would not be willing to acknowledge that they're going to maintain the confidentiality of the closed session, uh, it would be either that or the committee would have to decide whether or not to have the closed session and maybe wouldn't be able to discuss the, uh, the topic. So, uh, you know, if, if an alderman won't agree to maintain the confidentiality of a closed session, uh, the alderman shouldn't stay in the closed session. 
not, uh, it's not just aldermen, but the uh, committee members. Well, I don't, I don't have a problem with, um, you know, closed sessions. It's, we all took an oath here. To sign this yet on top of that, I think, is foolish. Um, I, I will not support this. I, I, I already took my oath, and I'm not going to be signing papers. I think it's a waste of time. Thank you, uh, Alderman Belt. Alderman Heideman? Thank you, Mayor. Again, it's, it's a sad state of affairs that when we have to sign a paper to make sure that we remember the oath that we already took. That doesn't make any sense at all. But I just want a clarification. Does this mean that at every committee meeting, when, like, a public protection and safety, if you're going to go to the closed session, you've got to sign a paper? Exactly. Or is, it, or is this just at the council floor are we doing this? But this is it throughout every meeting. So then somebody's going to have to have a stack of papers. The chairman's going to have to have a stack of papers every time they go into a meeting with, um, with these documents, right? I, I understand this says the discretion to utilize. So I think it would be but, at but the discretion there, of the chairman there. of the committee. The, the, that paperwork is going to have to be there. Uh, give, give me the chairman. Okay. I just want to be sure uh, it's clear on that. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Any further discussion? I would just like to make one comment um, to Alderman Boren. Alderman Boren, I think your comments are out of context, accusing me of putting out confidential information. I never have. I never will. Alderman Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I had on WHBL the next morning after the closed session, and I heard you identify a principle that we discussed in closed session. In fact, we didn't even name any principles in closed session. The vote that we took that night was uh, on a uh, proposed land sale. We didn't even, it was very generic. We did not n name any principles. You did. And if you want me to get the recording and play it, I will. Alderman Boren, I think your comments are politically motivated. I They're not politically man motivated Alderman Boren, at all. Alderman Boren, I am it's, speaking it's, it's at the, the moment, truth. please. Alderman Boren, I'm speaking at the moment. I think your comments are politically motivated. I will leave it at that. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call. Heidemann? Nope. Cuth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? No. Warren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Seven ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Moving on. Report of Committee 9 by Salary and Grievances, reestablishing the salary schedule for the Office of Mayor full-time and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Um, who is the Vice Chair of Salary and Grievances? Scott, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. It would be the substitute. Is Sub that what you're looking to do? Yes, the substitute resolution upon its passage. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Under discussion, There's we have. Second. Do we have a second on that? Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion, Vice President Hammond. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know how the decorum of this one is. Um, Attorney McLean, so you're gonna. I would actually like to uh, move that uh, this goes back to salaries and grievances um, for further contemplation and discussion. I think there's some things from a benefit package standpoint. Um, on other things that we need to uh, take a look at, uh, I was in, uh, talked with uh, um, Chairman um, Riesler, and uh, he would like it to go back as well. Um, so uh, can I make that motion? Second. That move it goes back to salaries and grievances, please. Okay, we have a motion and a second to send this back to salary and grievances under discussion on the motion only. There is no discussion. Uh, we will call a roll call on sending it back to salary and grievances. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, moving on, ordinances introduced 10. 
2029 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Kittleson, Decker, Versi, and Sampson, amending the municipal code so as to create the job description of neighbor, neighborhood slash development specialist in the city development department, Alder Person Kittleson. Excuse me, Mayor. Um, it was requested that this get referred back to salary and grievance. There's some errors in here, okay. if that's all right with you. Thank you, Mayor. Then I would ask that we refer this uh, document, 20-29, back to salary and grievance. Second. Please. Motion and a second to send this back to salary and grievances. Any discussion or opposition on sending this to salary and grievances? Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? To salary and grievances, it goes. 2030 to be referred. Uh, other matters authorized? Who does it go to? I don't know. That's a good question here. Public protection and safety. That will be referred to PPNS. I was looking at mine and I didn't see where it was going either. Uh, other, other matters? Attorney McLean. 2031 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. That will be referred to law and licensing. And 2032 is an RO by the development manager uh, submitting a request to allow the Corps of Engineers and their consultant uh, at no cost to the city to prepare an invasive species control and management plan which will be inclusive of specific measures to target the invasive species present at the Shookert property. That will be referred to city planning. Move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.